or all manuals that um, refer to a certain error constant. Um, such search keys can even be combined. So if you don't know exactly whether it will be a, a fun function type or a variable type or a function argument, your search term will show up in. You just get, give multiple macro names and search for the same keyword in all of them at the same time. If you don't know at all what kind of thing you are searching for, how it might be marked up, you can, use, you can search across all the search keys. Remember, if you don't supply this any, then it just searches in the title line. In, if you supply the any, then it searches in everything that's marked up in any way. You can even use regular expressions. If you exchange the equal sign by a tilde, then it uses regular expressions for, for searching in those keys. You can construct complex search queries. For example, here I'm saying I want to see all section one manuals that either contain TBL in the title line or contain a name EQN. Obviously, I'm interested in, uh, in graph extensions, and it shows me a list of, of matches, but only from the, from the matching section. So terms are, you, are joined with O, and if you specify a section with minus X, it's appended with, with AND. You can also make the, the AND or O explicit, like in FIND. You can even use parentheses to group it. So for example, here I'm saying I want section one manuals having terminal as a word in the, in the title line but which also have a mention of either research Unix or old BSD. So I want traditional terminal tools. And it gives me, indeed, a list of, of tools that have been around for a long time. Such stuff is working basically since this year. Uh, right in, in the meantime, we can see that later, even in the web interface, that it works. Not only the input format, so I've shown so far, has been improved, but also the output format. Traditionally, uh, you always get the name and the section of the manuals that match, because that's what you need here, this first column. That's what you need to, um, to actually look at the manual with man. By default, you would get here, after the dash, the title line. But you can explicitly request some other macro, not the ND macro, some other macro to be shown. For example, here I'm saying, I want to see manuals having wireless in their title line. But I don't want to see the title line. I already know that contains wireless. I want to see the Configura kernel configuration directives from these manuals. So I can see on one with these wireless adapters, uh, see at first sight whether they attach at PCI or at CART bus or wherever with one command. Traditionally, I would have to do apropos and then look with man at each of them separately. Um, and now we come to the surprise topic of this talk. It's a thing that wasn't completed when I proposed the talk that has been done really during the last two or three months. Traditionally, the Mandoc toolbox didn't include the MAN program itself. Our philosophy was Mandoc is for formatting and MAN is for displaying. <coughs> but we have changed that. The next Mandoc release will also contain the MAN program so that all Mandoc, MAN, apropos, what is, have the same user interface. And they all do 
the same steps now. They first decide how to interpret your command line arguments, then build a list of match matching manual pages, decide which kind of output provide to you, depending on your options, maybe sp spawn a pager, and finally loop around the list of pages and produce some output for each of them. Um, let's look at, at the ways the, the command line arguments can be interpreted. If you specify the minus L option, then the command line arguments are just file names. So it takes each file name, maybe formats it, maybe shows it. That's the default operation mode for mandoc, as mandoc always worked. If you call it as man in the default mode, the command line arguments are names of manual pages. So it looks up just like traditional man did those names in the file system and shows you the manual pages. If you use the F arg argument, it, uses, it does what what is used to do. So look as for names as complete words. If you use the minus K, it, it supports the full apropos um, syntax. What is new is that no matter which of the command names you use, you can always use all of them options. So you can even say what is minus L and it work, will work just as mandoc. So you just need to remember one set of options. All the traditional database selection options work with all the commands. So to, to show you one example, probably just, just do that out of the presentation. You, Yes, probably a good idea. Let me see. Not there. It's right. No, still more. Yeah. So usually you do something like, oh no, that's a bad one. Uh, I always get the uh, anything. Usually I get a, a manual just formatted for output on the terminal. Now with the new tool, I say man minus HTML HTML monkey typing I get it formatted as HTML so I put a links minus standard in after it here I have the manual as HTML. Uh, Firefox doesn't work like that, I think. No, but with Firefox, it did. but anyway. Um, or another thing I say, apropos mdoc, I get a list of, um, of manuals that match. I say apropos, which didn't work in the past, I give it an op output option that was, that was only supported by man in the past, but not by apropos. I get the file names. No? Man, uh, sorry, man minus vgrof always worked. You get the file names instead of the formatted pages. Now apropos minus v also works. So having all combinations of all options is quite handy without having to remember something else for, for each command. So these, these database selection options, the traditional ones, no work with, with all the commands. The output options, um, minus A 
doesn't show just the first manual matching, but all the manuals matching, one after the other. So I could say, apropos some keyword with minus A, and I get all the matching manuals right away, so that in my, in my less, in my pager, I can search through all of them. Minus H is a traditional option from MAN, too. Just shows the synopsis. Um, now also works with, with apropos. Um, I've already shown minus, uh, minus W to show the, the file names. And even, even the parser and formatter output options now work with all of them. Like, uh, for example, what, what is maybe relatively... Ah, yes, I've, I've already shown an example with minus T, THTML. And finally, uh, the, the C output option to suppress the pager is also there, there for all. So that's the, the unified interface we now have. And uh, a, a nice anecdote about it is that a few months ago, I presented in, in Ottawa at BSD CAN, and I presented a list of things to do, five or six entries. And this unified interface was not on the list. I had no idea I would do it. But then on the uh, beginning of August, so about six or seven weeks ago, Paul Onishok of Alpine Linux asked, well, why do, don't you do MAN? Or do you do MAN? And almost without thinking, I, I wanted to reply, no, we don't do that. <laughs> then I stopped and thought, well, why not? and realized the code was almost all already there. I just had to reshuffle it a bit. I needed to do two releases first, so it took about two weeks until it was finished. From the, from the idea on August 9, first working version, still in the same month, and then in August 26, I had it integrated in OpenBSD. Admittedly, in OpenBSD, it's so far only integrated for apropos what is and mandoc. Man is still the traditional tool. Some bugs need to be fixed there. Um, to not get too technical, I will be a bit shorter on these two slides. One of the problems we still have is what a name is. You expect that when you say man something, it shows you the manual page for something. So the manual page that is called something dot one or so. So the traditional man only looks at file names. The new man looks for names in more places, like in the, in the prologue that you just learned how to write, in the name section, in the synopsis section, and all that will show up as manuals in MAN now, which can be annoying. For example, um, I, I happen to have the GNU core utils installed. Now when I tape MAN LS on OpenBSD, I get the GNU LS manual because it all has, also has LS in the name section. That's obviously bad. That's a thing I need to fix before we can en enable that. And there are, there are a few more things. Um, one very nice thing that Christophs did two or three years ago is a minus i interactive option does the following. You run an apropos command. You get a list of possible matches with numbers in front. And then you say, oh, I want to see number five. Just type five, enter, and get the manual page without going back to the shell in between and having to retype the name and possibly mistyping it. Um, that will probably be integrated, but it's not done yet. And there are some problems with manconf and so on. I'll cut that here. What is probably more interesting for you is that uh, it not only works on the, at the shell, typing interactively, but you can also do the full power of this semantic, a complex, and um, searches on the web. So the, the best thing to explain that is probably 
a live demo I have here, yes. Oh, let's do it a different way. I start from the OpenBSD um, site. I go to manual pages here, right on the OpenBSD page. What's wrong with it? Is that a problem with the network here or with... So this one works. What the hell? Maybe some GMS problem. The network is maybe... I don't understand. Okay. Something is something is wrong with the network and I don't know what it is. So uh, we can try again later, maybe after the working phase I can try to do the demo again. Um, right now, let's just say, just explain it in words. Um, you can enter the same apropos searches. You can enter at the command line into the web interface. So even if you don't have OpenBSD installed, you can do the semantic searches for, for manual pages um, with, all the, with all the good stuff I've shown before for the command line. Um, it, it has a few additional features even compared to to the terminal, of course, because it's on the web, it can do hyperlinks, both inside pages from one section to the other, and across pages pointing from one page to the other. And there is additional potential that is not yet really used, because the HTML elements have uh, annotations stating the syntactic functions. So that could be used for CSS or for further markup Right now, the markup on the web is only the same um, as that terminal, but one could add to that. At this point, uh, I'd like to extend a special thanks to Sébastien Marie, a French colleague who did an extensive security audit of this code and reported a considerable number of uh, security bugs that meanwhile have all been fixed, but that was, that was quite useful to have. Yeah, so we already had the coffee break. Um, I was planning to, yeah, we are right on time, planning to have a few minutes on system integration. And then uh, the second working phase. So, how to speed this up. What is, first, what is system integration all about? The traditional way is to either format all the manuals while you are building the operation system and f installing pre-formatted manuals. Some operating systems do that. Or to install unformatted manuals and then at runtime, when a, when a user runs man, the man in the background traditionally calls NROF, the formatter, to format the manual page and pipes the output to the user's pager. Now, quite some operation, operating system switch um, in this second way from, N, from using NROF to MANDOC which is better because it's, it's smaller, it doesn't use C++ in the base system, it's faster and many other things. Uh, systems already having done that include OpenBSD and NetBSD. FreeBSD is about to do the switch, so I prepared something for in case there would have been any FreeBSD developers here to explain in depth what they still need to do to get there. Um, I guess I will skip most of it, just a few points. The first thing they need to do is what some of you have done here. Try in the tree whether, whether everything really builds with Mandoc, figure out the fatal issues, 
report the, the non-fatal ones to us, and so on. Um, yeah, that's about the non-fatal. Of course, if you're doing the system integration, it's more important than uh, if you are just doing quality checking to see that the output from Mandoc is really the same as the output from Grof because you don't want your manuals to change. You just want to exchange the tool. And then finally, um, you switch over the tree by exchanging the tool. At that point, it's important to do it right after a release when you have a long time to fix potential problems. Um, yeah, regression testing is not really interesting here for this audience because it's about regression testing of the tool itself, right? Um, so, so much about, about base system integration, just very brief. Manual pages in ports, uh, are you aware what, what ports is about, what the term means? Some, but some are looking confused. It's, it's, uh, if you take software that is developed operating system independently, and make it run on a particular operating system. That's, yeah. So in that case, you get very diverse manual pages written by many different people in many different styles using all kinds of unusual functionalities. So about 95% of them will work with, with Mandoc and about 5% will not work with Mandoc because they are using low-level rough functionality that simply isn't implemented yet or will maybe never be implemented because uh, Mandoc is not a full ROF processor. So you have to do something that those manuals that can't form it with your new base system tool, Mandoc, still can be looked at by users. You, know, you can't just throw out ROF and then you remain with 5% of manual pages that are still gone, uh, simply gone. Um, the OpenBSD solution to that, developed by Mark Espy, who is also here and who is giving a talk on, um, on porting in general, is to add a flag to the, to the port make file saying this, um, this port needs raw for formatting. And if that flag is set, in the port build system, pre-format the pages during the build and install the formatted version. If that flag is absent, just install the unformatted one so that it gets processed at, at runtime by the usual Mandoc, in the usual Mandoc way. That, that works quite well, very reliably, and very simply. In, in OpenBSD, we did it in the way that first we marked all the ports having manuals as use graph to be on the safe side, and then by hand checked all of them and switch them away from use graph. We have about 8,000 ports and 1,200 of them still use graph. So more than 3,000 have been checked in the last three years and have been moved to, to use Mandoc. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll skip that. Um, Obviously, we are also improving Mandoc all the time, fixing bugs, implementing new functionality that helps, helps particularly. Here is a list of some macros and requests that have recently been implemented. Obviously, that helps in particular for ports because manuals and ports are using lots of weird stuff. Oh, I didn't really talk about make what is because that's also more for operating system developers. Um, if you switch over, if you pull Graph out of the tree completely, FreeBSD will probably never do that because there are a lot of developers who, who think that having a real, um, fully professional typesetting system in base is important. But NetBSD might do, do that at some point. Then you have to pay attention to a few additional things. But again, as you are not changing the base systems, not go into the details here. If you're interested, you can. You can read that later. Okay, for the wrap-up, um, 
I'm briefly going through the various operation systems uh, that this conference applies to and telling you what the status in respect with respect to manuals is. In OpenBSD, we were the first operating system completely switching to Mandoc and it's now almost four years that Op that Groff is completely disconnected from the build and uh, Mandoc is the only documentation formatter in the OpenBSD base system, so since October 2010. And since April this year, we are having the full make what is. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, thank you. Since April this year, we are having the full Mac what is apropos functionality that some of you have been experimenting with. Um, so that's nearly a finished story. Of course, there are a few things still to do. I will come to that later in the very last slide, future things to do. Future things are likely to, again, happen in OpenBSD first. The second system to switch to using Mandoc as the default formatter was NetBSD. NetBSD also had Mandoc in base very early, already in 2009. Jörg Sonnenberger did that. He is in the room right beside in the NetBSD Developer Summit. Yes, he's here. Just saw him. Um, and. Uh, Jörg Sonnenberger and Thomas Klausner also support Mandoc in, in PKG source, a portable a porting system which supports lots and lots of different platforms, so that's quite important. Um, the, the point in time when they switched was basically 2012 in one big step. The next thing NetBSD should probably do is figure out how to get semantic searching, but that's a, a rather big problem because right now they have full text search that is not semantic but also uh, using SQLite. So they have to figure out how to, to integrate the two searching systems, the, one, the homegrown one they did and the semantic searching. That will be tricky. You can be glad that you need not do it. <laughs> now. FreeBSD and Dragonfly both have Mandoc in the base system, FreeBSD since version 10. But in both FreeBSD and Dragonfly, it's only installed and not yet used by default. Semantic searching is not yet supported at all, not even as an option. Um, the next steps then would be to update to the latest release, 1.13.1 and then to actually use it to format manuals. And unless they manage to do that, it's not much use talking about anything else for those systems. Um, Ulrich Spörlein in FreeBSD has done a lot of preparatory work. Um, Franco Fichtner in Dragonfly also, so they should manage to do it. Now, um, there is one more system that recently switched to using Mandoc. Any of you have any guess what that could be? Apple OS? No. It, it runs on Apple. Christops has always tested it. I heard something else. Uh, have you told it in the beginning it's a goose? Oh, I gave it away. Right. Forgot about it. Sorry. That's, that's uh, an amazing thing that happened there. Years ago, in 2010 or 2011, two guys from Illumos briefly spoke to me and then never again. And I thought, well, they are not doing anything. And then this July, just a few months ago, suddenly one giant commit happened. And they did all in one step. They imported Mandoc into base. They switched from installing formatted manuals to unformatted manuals, and they switched from using Groff as a formatter to using Mandoc as a formatter, all in one commit, and it just worked. 
I, I've, I've no idea how to manage to get, they managed to get such a giant switch working at once, but there weren't even many cleanup commits afterwards. Must have done a tremendous amount of testing. So right now, Ilomos is the only non-BSD that is using Mandoc by default. Minix, by the way, uh, the, the Minix uh, chief, like uh, Professor Tannenbaum is here and is giving a talk. Minix has OpenBSD, uh, um, has uh, Mandoc in base because they have imported it from NetBSD. They have most of the NetBSD user land, but they are not using it and it is very old. It's three years old. I never updated it. Mac OS X has an old port, an old package from 2010, but it seems... Which package system is that? I, I don't use my packages, but they've got like four, Mac ports. Mac ports it is, yeah. Oh, they have... Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah, well, uh, you, you probably should probably check out Homebrew or something. Okay. So if any, anybody is using actually using macOS and find support, just tell me. I'm always interested in keeping track of who's using it to be, to be able to actually help people. Well, but, uh, so it definitely runs on macOS, and, uh, but not very actively ma maintained. Recently, I noticed, yes? Oh. It does seem to exist out there. 1.3. Yeah. No. 1.3.0. Well, that's, that's worse than prehistoric. Well, I'm just looking at it, you know. It is there. I mean, everything that is older than 1.11 is really, really yeah, ancient, so like three or four years old. I know, I'm just looking at the. Okay, we can figure out that. Uh, afterwards, yeah, yeah, interesting. And uh, I recently realized that there is even a Cygwin port for, for Windows. Um, I, I never talked to the guy, Jakob Selkowitz, but uh, I, I dropped him a mail but didn't receive an answer yet. So even for Windows users, there might be a way to get that, but I'm, I don't really know much about Windows, so I can't help much there. Um, yeah, status in Linux. There's one Linux distribution that is very actively maintaining their port, also has it for a long time, which is Alpine Linux. Uh, Alpine Linux, a small French distribution focusing on keeping it, it small and simple, also for, for embedded stuff. Um, they have provided a lot of feedback. Um, then, of course, Arch Linux and Slackware Linux both have ports. And recently, this April, um, a guy popped up who has basically prepared ports for everything, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, uh, SUSE, Ubuntu. But of course, it takes a long time to get anything into those systems. So we should probably speak again in two or three years whether anything has actually been imported. Yes? Okay. Okay, I never heard about that distribution, but I will uh, will have a look. Oh, actually, that's not a good idea to replace Graph because the main purpose of Graph is a um, a, a typesetting system. So you use it for setting books or talks or something, while Mandoc is a documentation system. So you. It may well be that you need both at the same time, I, but I, I yeah, it's looked, just... I, I just looked at the, at the package, uh, and I, I, it, it says in the description that it replaces Graph. I have no idea if, if that's true or to what extent. Uh, yeah. I haven't tried, tried it yet, but I just yeah. noticed and wanted to share. Yeah, it's good, good that you share. Just mentioned that you shouldn't do it that, that way because uh, it might mislead people if it just yeah. stands like that. Okay, so possible future directions. Uh, there are still quite a few of things I'd like, I'd like to do. Of course, replace the traditional MAN 
implementation in OpenBSD with the Mandoc one, which is more powerful. Switch the default output mode from TASCII to TLocal. That's actually a very easy thing to do. It will not affect people who are using the CLocal because it will just do the same as before, but it will be more convenient for people using a new UTF-8 local. Then I'd like to integrate preconf into Mandoc. That will especially be interesting for Russian and uh, Japanese people who are um, using UTF-8 manuals in non-English languages. will make the command line for running the formatter much easier. Um, and there is a lot of work going on on conversion tools, like the, the LibreSSL documentation is right now all in the Perl documentation format pod, and we are converting it to MDoc. And Christops and myself are working on tool to, tools to facilitate that. That's, of course, related to Mandoc. Some other projects of a similar way, like uh, providing tools to, some of you have started to do manual translations from MAN to MANDOC, uh, from MAN to MDOC. There is also a project to, to use an existing tool by uh, Eric, Steve, uh, and Raymond to couple that with, with MANDOC to, to get manuals translated from MAN to MANDOC semi-automatically. You will still have to, to do manual post-processing, of course. And I, I'd, also like to do some low-level infrastructure work on Mandoc that I'll not bore you with. So there is still an interesting future. And uh, finally, I'd like to mention a few people who helped with this. Of course, Kristaps Stransons, who wrote the tool in the first place a few years ago. Then Jörg Sonnenberger from NetBSD, who helped write important code in particular in the initial phase a few years ago. There have been considerable, uh, a considerable number of people from various projects who contributed patches. Franco, Christos, Tsugutomi. Uh, Very important is the work that Mark Espy and OpenBSD has done on ports integration. I think I wouldn't have been able to go anywhere with uh, lots and lots of discussions with the OpenBSD manual maintainer, Jason McIntyre. The, the whole thing probably wouldn't have happened either without Theo Derat, the OpenBSD project lead who invited Christops to commit the stuff. Otherwise, I probably have missed the, the whole thing completely. Then, thanks again to Sebastien Marie for the recent security check on the, on the web thingy. The main people who help porting are Thomas Klausner, NetBSD, he's, who is always uh, also in the room beside, who did the NetBSD porting, and Ulrich, of course, and FreeBSD. There were a lot more people in OpenBSD, which I'm not all named, who did various things to help us. And a very long, it's actually an impressive list. All these people reported bugs or suggestions that were actually acted on. So each of these names resulted in at least one commit. Yeah, and then I used lots of pictures. But, yeah. So, do you have any questions to finish the session? Anything else you should like to know about manuals? Yeah, Krista? I'm curious, who's written a manual page here? Someone. Who, who would if it were easier to do it? Oh. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I, I probably would. E even after looking at the Mandoc portable manual? Uh, no, I, I didn't really have time to, 
Okay. To really read the manual, um, I just picked out some macros to, to make it look almost like the original man, uh, man page I wanted to translate. Mm -hmm. So I managed to do that, but now I've got four warnings, and um, I'm pretty sure it's done something, something slightly wrong. But uh, yeah, it's not entirely clear how to do it right. Okay, so that's so a it, it, would, it might be helpful to have like one complete man page where you show uh, how, to, how to do different stuff. That's, that's so probably Christoph's tutorial, one. yes. Not for really using it after you have collected a bit of experience, yeah. but for getting so, started, that yeah, would be an interesting yeah. thing, yeah. So that, interestingly, there is also something I'm taking back from here, because my impression is that there are quite a few experienced people around here who, who do a lot of software development, and that in, in contrast to what I, what I think, the stuff is a bit less, um, easy to approach than, than I thought and that maybe uh, I even started an, on a level that was a bit a, a bit advanced so, so my impression is that there is really a need for for basic documentation basic tutorials and tools to get started yeah so we, we should definitely clean up and improve your tutorials and what is already there um, is a recommendation besides the if you if you want to read a bit more of it when you get home then of course you have the slides to look at again you have the the write-up which has a bit a, a lot more of technical detail you have the tutorial but there is lots of stuff for us to to improve in particular for beginners that's interesting for me yeah Anything you want to say for the for the wrap up? Maybe what uh, anything you missed or anything you enjoyed particularly? I think it was good. Okay. It's, it's well believed, um, you know, and you're obviously very enthusiastic about it, and that that's good. So yeah, you're obviously oh, interested nice to hear in, that. In, in helping people to understand more, which is which is really good. Nice to hear that. Okay. Yeah. Then I wish all of you a nice evening and a nice conference, really starting tomorrow, that whole thing. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.